grandma's talking about that you know the stuff her her friends are performing if you are easily offended please leave and don't come back the views opinions and statements from this podcast are by no one i repeat by no one they are not real and everything is completely made up this is for entertainment purposes only the people in this podcast are not doctors lawyers or health professionals they barely graduated high school it's not that serious. Enjoy the show and have a nice day. Welcome to another episode of Vernon's Podcast, brought to you by me, Vernon Smith. I'm coming to you from, well, I'm not going to disclose my location. Um, Today is another special episode. I have a really, um, it's kind of just, you can call this, I guess, like a, let's say a cross thing crossover i guess i did his shit he's coming to do mine thankfully yeah uh, so without further ado sir you like me do would you want to introduce yourself <laughs> okay uh for those that don't know who i am i am uh lawrence nayali and i hail from pizzaki first nations which is wrigley um it's uh the highway one it's the end of the all season road and um, that's where I'm from. My parents are Boniface and Dora Nayali. Uh, they were an elderly couple from the community that uh, well, I was blessed enough to be raised by. So those are my paternal uh, grandparents. Um, my, my father is Frederick Nayali. He passed in a plane crash in 84, so I never really got a chance to know him. Uh, my mother is from Delaney, and her name is, uh, or her maiden name is uh, Mary Jane Bitsidia. So oh, okay. uh, that, that to give you a sense, that's who I am. That's where I'm from, yeah. Okay, and he's also a host on Trails End with yeah. CBC Radio 1. So, how is that? What's that like? Huh. Uh, radio, like this format um i guess you know for the cbc they are a national corporation um huge and they are yeah they're they're pretty big they're uh w- w- right up there when it comes to uh media yeah here in this country um so you know working with that corporation um it's been positive um, there's all, you know, as you get into any role, um, there are challenges and, and there's learning curves and, and what have you. And I feel like having done 14 years within this industry, I can kind of say, you know, I've learned a thing or two, but I'm still learning. I'm, I'm still fairly young and, uh, you know, I'm just blessed really and thankful for, uh, you know, people that took a chance on on little old me from from mm-hmm. Wrigley, yeah. yeah. But uh, working at CBC, you know, it's it's great. Uh, before that, I worked with uh, CKLB, um, which is part of the Northwest Territories Native Communication Society, and mm. so they have a radio station that broadcasts to like thirty two communities across the Northwest Territories. And that's really where I got my start in um, radio. Uh, was uh, there, it, it's quite a story to that, but um, yeah, that's that's where I started out, and uh, it's a great indigenous-run organization that revolves around language use, language pre- uh, uh, preservation and promotion, and it also, you know, uh, gives the information that many communities need um they play great music they have great shows and it was a real uh real it was a lot of fun working at cklb but uh you know going back to that question you asked uh you know how's it at trails end with cbc uh it's it's great because you get to travel uh quite a bit for that job um one of the things i've grown to love so much is sitting with somebody you know sometimes you barely know you've just met them but sitting with them and for them to be able to share their stories with you um that is such a privilege it's such a great honor you know and um when i was first starting out i just thought oh okay well well, i'm just talking to people you know just asking simple questions and, and what have you 
Um, sometimes they're complex questions. Sometimes they're important questions to be asked and what have you. But uh, at the very beginning, I thought it was just going to be, you know, uh, like that. Um, but you go long enough in this sort of a career you start to learn that um, stories do matter people and their time is uh, valuable you don't want to be wasting it uh, so and you learn a great deal that's that's i think one of the the main draws for me is you learn you're always learning yeah every single day you and you know, along the way, you, you pick up little pieces of what, what people had to share, you know, mm. their advices. And then you say, oh, that sounded good. I, I'm going to see if I can practice that in my own life. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? And, and so um, that's kind of uh, what I like doing. And really, storytelling has been around since we mm, first never. started yeah. out um, as a civilization, as a people. And, you know, sharing stories through Gondi, your words, your living words, your breathing words, uh, has been around for a very long time. Mm. You know, people meet each other out way out in the trail and they'll sit down and they'll exchange stories where they've been, what they've seen, the animals they've hunted, the good, you know, hunting and, and harvesting areas and, and what have you. So I just find that something like this just is natural. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So is is this something that you've always wanted to do? Or did you just like jump into it and see what it was like and how it felt? <clears throat> okay, so that's a that's an interesting uh story. So uh, when I was uh in uh Wrigley, I, I worked for the uh Pitsaki First Nations for a number of years. Um I worked in communications and I seen how effective if you can take information and summarize it in a way that's understandable to people. Yeah. Um, you uh, you keep them informed, and you make sure everybody feels involved. That's so important. You make sure everybody feels involved, like they're part of this, because they are, right? Yeah. Uh, whenever it comes to self determination or uh, seeking our independence from you know the federal or territorial government, and, and trying to carve out a path that that'll you know see us designing our own futures yeah um you can achieve you know g visions if, if you you communicate them well enough so i was working with the ban office and you know um it was great you know working for your people being of service to others is uh you know from what my grandfather shared with me it's it's like one of the top honors you can have right yeah you know not being a selfish person you know not just working for you 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 um if you can somehow find value in helping others um that that feeds the spirit right it makes you feel good so you know i felt good working for my my first nations and then um you know i met the love of my life and uh brought her home and it just kind of blossomed from there. To and, Wrigley? Yeah, to Wrigley. And then, you know, we found out we're having a baby and she wanted to move back over here. And I just asked if I wanted to come. And I thought, you know, um, so our minds are designed to protect us from any danger, mm, right? Yeah. So they say you got about five seconds to th really think about... Um, the leap you're about to take Ooh, if you know really? what i mean okay yeah, yeah you know what i mean yeah after five seconds your brain just shuts you down and tells you no you're not doing that it's too risky mm, it, yeah it, it's gonna hurt you so you have those five seconds to to really think okay I, i'm gonna do it and you do it and so uh, um when she asked you know if i wanted to come over here i thought those five seconds yeah. <laughs> i was like yeah sure why not you know without even thinking about so Pla planning forward you know what i mean because i came here with nothing no idea what was going to happen you know where i was going to end up all i knew was that there was a baby that was about to be born and i felt in my heart it you know they needed a father to be there mm. right well, along with the mother and if things didn't work out and we separated i would still make an effort to make it work right because it really takes two. Um, yeah. and, and so 
I said yeah, and I was co- helping coordinate a, a gathering, and there was hand games and whatnot, and I was doing that, and she had already given birth, and I was like two, three days late. And How old were you? Uh, I was, I want to say when 23, you, 24. When you had your first kid? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. I was about 24, yeah. Oh, okay. And, um, and so... Um, yeah, I, I told my work, this is my last, uh, event that yeah. I'm going to be help, helping out with. I'm moving to Yellowknife. Because you were um, three days late? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I got to get out of here. And yeah. I, I believe that was a Saturday or Sunday. Mm. And, uh, I had like, what, $1,400 that, the, you know, that they, they paid me and mm. I cashed that and. You know, some of it went for gas, and the rest I knew had to go for food and diapers and clothing oh, yeah. and all of that. So I was like, okay. So came here, just jumped right into it. Just jumped right into it. You know, we were staying at my spouse's uh, parents, yeah. And um, it was interesting. You know, when you first become a father, you really have to take into account that it's not about you anymore that well, hopefully that, hopefully that's your mindset <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you know it's like uh it really isn't about your journey anymore like mm. it, it somewhat kind of is but i mean you have a responsibility now you have to you know bring up this this young person and you have to make it work right yeah um, so from there, uh, just ended up getting, uh, you know, work here and there and not really no thought to what I wanted to do here. I do know this though, when I was younger, I always had this vision in my mind of the parent you're going to be like, oh, no, sorry, uh, of, of the things I wanted to do, oh. how I see myself carrying, carrying myself out into my adult years. I knew mm. I was going to do something, you know, um, that was, that was going to be great or good and, and that it was going to be fulfilling for me. Yeah. I don't know what that was when I was younger, but I, I believed it and <clears throat> the whole attitude and idea of, you know, um, putting your, you know, everything into something and kind of um, nurturing, uh, you know, this this manifestation that you want to see become a reality. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's really true because that's how I thought when I was younger, right? So did you, you didn't know exactly what it was that you were going to do? No, no, but I knew something was coming along the way. I don't know if this relates to some people out there. Yeah, but you, you, I, you, I relate to that too. You know what I mean? There's yeah. just something inside that you're just saying, there's more, there's more out there, but you're going to have to I've, take oh, a chance. Yes. You, you're going to have to put in the work. And you're going to have to make some sacrifices. And yeah. so I thought, okay, well, I never really fit in too. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was yeah. always kind of like the room, the energy of the room changes when I walk in. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's out of respect or, or fear or whatever. <laughs> Maybe doesn't it's matter. Like, oh, who's, who's this guy? Yeah. Um, that's great though. I think that that reason for that alone, that's probably why like, you need that in your profession so that people can listen to you, pay yeah. attention to you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's with that alone, do you think that, um, let's say, because like me and myself, I'm a bit of like an introvert. Yeah. So like, do you feel like that um, kind of attracts like um, too much attention where like sometimes you're just like, you know, wanting to like, don't want the eyes and ears on you or something? Uh, sometimes I tell myself that, you yeah. know, sometimes like, oh, I don't want this. I don't want to be doing that or stretch myself out too thin. But most of the times I just roll with whatever I feel is right. Yeah. And I go by that, right? I've always okay. done that throughout my life. Yeah. Um, but going back to, you know, um, what I was saying about the journey to finding out what I wanted to do, yeah. uh, where I was going to end up. So um, I, I do those jobs. I'm at ALS, ALS Laboratories here in Yellowknife. You know, they okay. crush rock and great people over there as well. And, uh, you know, I'm working there and I'm just like, you know, this is just another paycheck so I can put, you know, food on the table and help out with the baby and, and what have you. Yeah, it's like a stepping stone. Yeah, but I had aspirations like mm. I wanted to do bigger cooler things yeah you know yeah, what i mean yeah i wanted to make good use of this one life that i have you know and uh, enjoy because it. because I, I i you know it's kind of 
pushed on to you through media when you're growing up you know movies you gotta be a rock star and famous oh, yeah. and all this you, you gotta have the you know all of that and you you grow up and, and that's kind of what you chase right and then yeah. you get to my age and you're like holy smokes actually maybe that no there's more to it yeah right um but yeah you know i i had was working that job and um, you know, like I, I mentioned earlier, I was brought up by my grandparents and my grandfather would say, I see now go de jin de a conte chinta son fan aneti, a con conde co, a con quinti, a yalit a she, ma notsim et son hindi, right? What does that mean? Da hon dile nuts agentia. And, you know, what he would say, what he said was, if you ever have, you know, in your life, if it becomes very difficult, something's really hard for you. Now, go deji, if something's hard for you, mm. you know, go in the bush by yourself, make a fire, you know, feed that fire and sing a prayer song to, and, and, you know, to creator and ask for help and maybe they'll help you. Mm. And so um, I was at ALS and this was a Friday. I thought about that, you know, because I, it's, it's not like I was having a, a hard time, but at the same time, it, it kind of felt like that because, you know, I was, we were staying with her parents and, and we had moved out of there because at that time, I was already on my own for, mm. for the longest time. And so um kind of wanted our own space. And, and so you need a little bit of a better job. So I took my grandfather's advice. I went not far from down here. And uh, I did exactly as he asked. Made the fire, fed the fire. And then um I, I just said, you know, very plainly. Do you mind? Uh, yeah, go for it. Okay. You know, um I just said, I, I need help. Sit dealer says, on Indy. Know, are you can can you help me out a little bit? Ejo, I see nez in wala done a fan da in dogoa. Eda da who I see nez in a kilimic in inch in day in the in day at in day. Senez him at art, yeah. And what I said was like, if you can put something on my path here, you know, I'll, I'll try my best to to make you know do good with it. Yeah. And then I love that you're able to speak that fluently. Yeah, speak, speak your um, um native tongue fluently. What um, for the listeners who don't know, what oh, would that be? Oh yeah, that's uh they call it South Slavey, but I just call it Denejati. Mm. Um, I find Slavey is such a like a uh, you know it's a worn out term to describe a, a beautiful people. You know um, what was that term? Uh, South Slavey. Yeah, they're South Slavey, North Slavey, and uh, you know it, it's I guess. People are used to it, but I'm just like I'm not. I'm past that, you know. Mm. What I mean? Like so, like uh, um, it's, it's just denejati or decho decho yati, whatever. Um, but it's the dialect that I grew up from uh, around. Yeah, and that's um where our community is. We had Fort Simpson, which was a major gathering place long ago for our people. All right, and it still is. Um. But uh, we had people from over there, and then we had people from the, you know, Satu area, Satu Gut, and then, so it was really a, an interesting blend of languages in our community, because okay. then you had, you know, the people of the the lowlands, you have the people of the mountains, people of the river, people of the lakes, you know, uh, and, and the, you know, you had a, a different uh, clan system. You know uh, what I mean? Okay. They had different plans. And then they kind of amalgamated into one when Treaty 11 was taken up here. Oh, I was going to ask about that. You know what I mean? And after those treaties were signed, that's when all the other clans kind of came in and, you know, occupied the current communities that you see today. So that's kind of like a, a snapshot overview of my language dialect. It was mainly my grandparents that spoke in our house, right? But my grandmother was from the Fish Lake area. My father's, you know, family are from the black water and the mountain people uh -huh. so their phonetic sounds are a little bit more different like, like there's a lot of ph in there like uh you know fort simpsons they, they say th th mm. like for stars us we say fe. oh so, okay so a slight little difference not too bad um what's unique about languages you know is that a language will stay the same up to about 900 people and then naturally, the language will just switch dialects. Oh, okay. it'll, it'll create a new language for it to survive. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. It, you have to change to survive, eh? Yeah, yeah. Adapt. So, yeah, so that's that's my language, and uh, so that's what I had done, you know, during that time. And then 
Um, it's crazy. You know, I believed that something good was going to happen. And then three days, that, that was a Sunday I, I did that. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday rolled around. It was afternoon. I get this call on my cell phone. It's like three o'clock. And it's uh, this guy, Amos Scott, right? I, I know the name. I've seen him at the as assemblies when I was a kid. And he was always carrying around a camera. I thought, you know, the big, big tall guy from, from this way, you know, um, recording it. I, I, maybe it was for APTN. I don't know. Um, but, uh, he, you know, I, I guess I was helping the co-chair at Detro Assembly and I spoke my language and he happened to be there, heard it and figured I was uh, like, su uh, like fluent enough. Yeah. And so he gives me a call. And he was like, hey, Lawrence, it's Lawrence Haley, yada, yada, and, you know, a little bit of small talk. And he was like, I, I, I seen you at the Detro Assembly, and you spoke uh, pretty fluent Dene. Have you ever tried out radio? Mm. And I thought, radio? I was like, <clears throat> no, uh, never, no. I, I, you know, and then the, the next question was, like, have you got any experience in radio? I was like, aside from, you know, talking with Peter Hope on the CBC, yeah. you know, for community updates, that that's about it. Yeah. And he was like, well, you know, we got a position open for the Detro, the South Slavia area. Oh, okay. um, and we'd like to know if you'd be interested in trying it out, you know, go for an interview. And I thought, yeah, sure, I'll try that out. And, uh, you know, we went on to share, he shared, the, you know, the rest of the details where I was going to meet him and whatnot. And then at the end of the call, I stopped and I just thought, holy smokes, wow, that is... Uh, that is something, you know, to have listened to what my grandfather had to share and, and do that ceremony. And then three days later, get this call. And, mm -hmm. and it just set me on this totally different trajectory uh, in my life. And, and I'm very thankful for the, for that call, right? Yeah. And so um, that's, ex that's what happened. And then I went for the job interview. And, you know, I, of course, I, I think I was 25, no, 24, 25 around that time. Yeah. Yeah, I was 25. So yeah. that was 14 years ago? Yeah, at 25 years old. And then they were like, uh, you know, I, I told them uh, a bit about myself and what I'll be able to do. And then they were like, yeah, we'll train you up for two weeks. There's this Detro Annual Assembly happening and, you know, um, we'd like to send you. So I was like, wow, okay. So I got two weeks training and it was Les Carpenter, uh, you know, God, creator, rest his soul. He was such a... Uh, a kind, heartful, incredible man mm. um, who so, just wanted to see the best in our, you know, indigenous youth, right? Is he a mentor of yours? Yeah, him and uh, Willem Greenland. Mm. Willem Greenland, a lot of people might know him. I grew up watching him MC, so um, we'll we'll get that to that later. But um, you know, I just thought these were incredible people, and I was mentored by so many others. And then, um, you know, it just kind of blossomed into something incredible. We ended up doing, uh, helping out with a podcast series called Feel Real Radio, uh, uh, podcast for youth, uh, JC for Hagen and, and so many others that we got to work with. Okay. Um, and it was, uh, you know, quite the journey, but I, I really feel like if you are, told by your elders like this is what you do in case you run into trouble or whatnot like believe it mm. you know or question it or, or what have you uh it's, it's entirely up to you yeah um but um hear that kids yeah yeah you hear that kids listen to your elders yeah they, they you know they live a long life to share these types of advices and so um yeah you know and then <sighs> years later you know, uh, we had worked for four and a half years, almost five years. Funding was cut, so mm. I was laid off. And that I, I want to call that the dark period Ooh. in my life. The, that's kind of where I fell uh, into depression, right? Talking mm. about mental health, yeah. especially among young Indigenous men, it, 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 it exists. Um you, you, you I, it's hard to describe it. It's, it's such a like down moment for any, you know, person, I think. Yeah. Um, that goes through depression. It's uh, life sucking. At and the time, did you know that that's what it was? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. knew it. Um, 
I I had some uh, really bad moments during that time because you you know you're out here, you're far away from your people, you're mm. far away from your support systems and your family, and you know you, you come to a, a community uh, and you're building these relationships and you're making these networks and these connections and everything's going good and then it just gets severed because yeah. the, you know the, the federal government you know pulls funding out of indigenous indigenous languages mm. and i was learning my language like i'm i'm getting stronger in the language right yeah uh, during this whole process but uh yeah you know uh, once that got severed you kind of go down like oh my gosh like what now like you know, I'm almost 30 years old and this is what I know so far. But I know like there's other opportunities. But at the time it was like uh, end, of the world. The end of the world. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're young and you're still navigating this life and this world where you fit in. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, I got an opportunity to work um, with at risk youth with Besha Blondin and she invited me and we did some work and, and that kind of kept me afloat and I uh, started doing other things and then, uh, got rehired back that summer. Yeah. Right. And then if it wasn't the same, you mm. know, it's just that uncertainty, that feeling, whether this is going to happen again, Yeah. how can I better prepare myself, uh, if in the event of that, right? So it was kind of like survival mode for yeah, me and I yeah. didn't like that. Like, yeah. I like just not having to worry about any of that, right? So your insecurity is, especially job insecurity, um, you know, it, it it's height, it gets heightened. Yeah. Um, so for me, that's kind of where I was. Mm. I didn't like it. So I, I did the thing again, you know, I'm, what my grandfather said. Yeah. Go in the bush, f make a fire, feed fire, and uh, use your drum, sing the songs, ask for help, and see where it goes from there. And I did that again. I said, you know, I'm not happy where I'm at. So if you can help me out again, that'd be great. Hmm. And then I get this t message on Facebook from Marlene Grooms, who is a Denis Soutine language announcer. Incredible, talented uh very, very great to work with. She's like my older sister. Oh, okay. Um, and she, you know, she was already at the CBC, asked me to apply, and I was like, it's like they're not going to hire me. You yeah. Know? Like, I'm just a small town kid from Wrigley. And that's a big platform, um, too. And I kind of like, at the moment, I doubted myself. Yeah. But then, like what I said earlier, you have those five seconds, right? Mm. And I thought, you know what? I'll never find out unless I try. And if I don't get picked, what well, you know, that's not the end of the world, yeah. right? I'm at I'm at that point in my life at at that you know in that section, and um, I was like, and if I you know I do great, and if I fail, then I'll learn from that and I'll prove on that, right? Yeah. And so uh, yeah, I I tried it out, and what's crazy is, um, I wrote up a my my resume, my cover letter, was gonna submit it via internet. Right. And then the job was taken down. And I thought, OK, this this is a sign. Yeah. Right. And then um, I told my friend Marlene and she was like, don't be silly. Just bring it in. I brought it in. And, you know, it's it's a huge oh, building. Like and, in person. Yeah. Oh. A whole bunch of mulas. <laughs> you know, for those that don't know what mula is, it's white people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's lots of those are running around. Yeah. And, you know, they're serious people. though, And uh you know, this is a big corporation, and I was into intimidation. That's what it was, right? Yeah. And um, it's kind of like just having uh, uncertainty to stepping into new territory. It's stepping into new territory, but it's also like when you've always been surrounded by your own people. Yeah. Work wise. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, that's what you're used to. Because you've always worked with indigenous. Yeah, like, and and then you yeah. you you're shifting it, and now you're working with non-indigenous people, and you don't know how they'll be around you, and yeah, you know, and, and that's just a testament to how little we've come to a place where we can start really knowing each other, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, I grew up in a in a time where we were warned not to you know, um, cause trouble for uh, non-Indigenous people because, yeah. you know, they would use their government and their RCMP against yeah. us and, you know, throw us into 
foster care or, yeah. you know, cut off their pension or, you know, toss my father into jail. Like, this is a reality. Like, this was not too long ago. This was happening, right? Mm. And so I, I grew up in that kind of, uh, you know, in that state, right? In, yeah. that, in that mindset that, you know, oh, be careful, you know, they, they you know, th- there's a lot that happen yeah. that make us react in this way that make us, you know, be a certain way, right? Yeah. Like- and so you you go in into a, a major field of work that you know is like that and, and then once you get in you're like okay well they're just like us yeah Damn. You yeah, know, yeah. They, you, they have similar stories and yeah. they have similar struggles they just say things like let's skedaddle yeah skedaddle or, <laughs> or whatever like, <laughs> yeah you, you could, but they're cool they're just you, you know they're cool like, like they're, and they're cool you yeah. know and we you know i've got you know i made some great friends yeah you have to look at them too like you, you you're figuring them out they're figuring yeah. you out yeah. it's just like yeah and then once you guys come into like a common ground of understanding yeah. and then everything's just fine it's yeah. Great. yeah yeah and they all want you know the best in their community and others and, and what have you and i totally respect that and you know i kind of grew up with uh you know there's always that one white guy in a native community you know yeah. what i mean yeah 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 i don't know whether you guys have that in, we do know, in yeah. mexico yeah yeah. yeah 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 and then just later after a while they ended up talking like us and, and they just get you know they they're just indoctrinated into all of it and they just like resi like us right? yeah and they get the jokes and <laughs> you know, they can speak a little bit of the phrases yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. You know, I have huge respect for people. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> they're they're stepping around. They're like surrounded by brown people. They don't know. Yeah, they just immerse themselves. <laughs> yeah. And so you know, we had a. Uh, I have a friend like that from back home, and his name's Trevor. And uh, you know, he's he's like a really close good friend. Yeah. And so, um, you Ooh, know, that, that I want to I want to go back to that um, when you went. Uh, to go work for um, CBC. Yeah. And then you were, were you like the only indigenous person there? Oh, no, no, no. I, I knew Marlene Grooms worked there. And, okay. And then you come, uh, you know, the, there's such a, uh, an incredible network. Yeah. And support system. Yeah. For, you know, non-indigenous or indigenous people in that organization. And you're connected with different um, producers, associate producers, hosts, and whatnot, indigenous hosts from across the country. Yeah. Right? And, and so that was great to see. And, yeah. and then, you know, um, but uh, yeah, you know, going into the Yellowknife CBC here. Yeah. How did they, how did you get your own show? What happened there? Oh, so no, the, so this was, uh, I guess, uh, a long time standing CBC radio show called Trails End, right? Oh, I thought that was like no. you, you created it. No, no, I wish I had. Yeah. But I'm glad somebody did before me. They knew what they were doing, they, they knew the format, the kind of content that they were going to be doing, you know, uh, sharing with people. And so coming from CKLB to that was like such an eye opener. Yeah. It like just, a bigger like, audience. Uh, it, well, it was. It doesn't. Well, when you're talking like this, it yeah. doesn't feel like there's a huge audience. Oh yeah, lot, you know. Yeah. But the reality is that there is. There's yeah. people that watch, and they're you know they watch what you say, right? Your voice it, is really powerful. It, too. It's powerful, and mm. that's what my grandfather always taught me growing up, right? You know, it could uh, hurt people, and yeah. it also can lift people up. So it's up to you, right? And, yeah. and the environment that you're in, which uh, you know, kind of dictates what what you what you'll say with this, whether with emotion, with heart, with spirit, yeah. with malintent, or whatever, right? Um, so, um, do you ever do you ever find so since you're like aware of that, since that your um, voice carries weight, do you ever find yourself kind of um, being like really like second guessing yourself and stuff before you say things, certain way things like? Um, I don't uh, think you got to be for for me. It's just about being mindful. Okay, and then what about like? Do you find yourself kind of like going against your beliefs and what you think just to kind of please the listener? Um, no, not really. Yeah. If, you know, I share my beliefs. I, yeah. I, I share who I am, right? Yeah. Very openly, um, because that's who I am. Yeah. Right? Like, like, what if you say like? Because you work for a big play, big company, eh? oh, and then they're yeah. like, "Hey, you got to, you have to, you have to do this, cover this." Yeah. And then if you don't want to do it, then what do you like? Oh, you can protest and oh, just okay. say, "No, I don't feel comfortable doing that," and yeah. they'll accommodate that, right? Oh, okay. Um, or if it's a very you know emotional thing that 
you know, you have to cover, you, you could not, right? Mm. You, I, I think we're at a point in time where we're allowed to do that. Yeah. You know, we're allowed to say no. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. I was, fuck, I was excited when, to, when um, we connected. Yeah. We reached out. And then I was just like, holy fuck, you guys haven't showed it. I went to go <laughs> check it and everything. I was like, this is insane. I was so happy to see, like, go to do whatever you want. And then um, it was just like, I can't believe, I, well, one, I couldn't believe you even reached out and I couldn't believe you want me on the show. And then afterwards, too, I was just like, holy shit. Once I got there, I was like, oh, this is actually fucking legit. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's legit. It's crazy. Yeah. And uh, that's the beautiful thing is that you can come from a small little town. Yeah. You know, as long as you know how to read, write, and storytell and describe, yeah. you know, situations and whatnot and articulate yourself well, yeah. go out there with grit, you can achieve these incredible things, right? Yeah. And I love that, too, when you said that uh, you just like, you go out of your way to to um, like help and bring shine light to indigenous um, stuff that's going on, eh? Oh yeah, yeah. Because we didn't have that. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, yeah. And the people uh, back in the '60s and '70s that that were at the forefront of that work. Yeah. You know, like damn. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, thank you for. You know, going through what you had to go through to give us, you know, a chance to be open with our voices. Yeah. Right. To to stand up for ourselves. Yeah. Because we were subjugated, subjugated to, to quite a bit. Yeah. You know, of abuses when it comes to residential schools and whatnot. And, you know... I, I feel like that had to happen. Right? I was like so thankful too. But the reason why it's because like you could have be, be, because like you could have just been like, you know, no, you know what I mean? Like that's nah, I don't, I don't interview that fucking kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> but then you weren't, you're so like with your open arms and because it's just like, because some people they could like be like competitive, you know what I mean? Mm. And then you just like kind of say, "Here, no, you yeah. know, put your arm around me and stuff." So it's that was fucking awesome. <laughs> well, so because there's like there's f- fuck we can all eat. There's yeah. food, lots of lots of money, lots of shit to go around. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's so true. <laughs> lots of opportunities for everybody. And for me, really, where that comes from is just from the people I surrounded myself with growing yeah. up. Right? Yeah. That's how my grandparents were. Yeah, you know, they respected everybody. And and they made sure, you know, people felt welcome and loved and appreciated and that your time with me is yeah. valuable. Like, I really value the time I'm spending with you. I want to hear what you have to say, you know, what you've been through and whatnot. And, yeah. And help you if I can in some whatever way that might be, right? Yeah. Um. So that's kind of the environment I, I always grew up around. Yeah. yeah. And you really look at it, too. I think that it's right now is fucking a perfect time for, like, creators or anybody who wants to be, like, like and oh, yeah. the creative space because there's so much ground to conquer yeah. everybody can do what every there's like um space for everybody who has like their own little niche thing yeah you know and because it's just wide open for the taking you know there's not there's no nobody's out here no. you know what i mean yeah, yeah yeah so it's exciting and i can't wait because i know that this is like, it's gonna happen and yeah. I, i'll like just jump right on it and get them on my show too and stuff <laughs> yeah like and um, I'm so excited to collaborate with people yeah. and have some more things on the way too. Yeah. Shit, it's, it's, I love it. Well, that's kind of part of the reason why I volunteered, you know, yeah. when, when you were like, oh, you got to come on the show yeah. when we're interviewing you. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, I thought about that and I was like, yeah, you know, I'd really like to see this podcast take off. Yeah. Uh, of course, like I had um, ideas of podcasts I want to do myself. Like it's just a form of storytelling and yeah. people are interested in stuff that other people have to share and their experiences they can learn from hopefully um but uh you know the 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 sky's the limit and it really is. the only limitation for anybody is yourself right you're yeah. the one that says oh i can't do this oh you're the one that says oh i can't do that mm-hmm. i don't know this or i don't know that like you got to um you know when when you grow up yeah when you become um when things become clear um, of just how things work and whatnot, um, you have to really know when to take those risks and chances mm-hmm. and just say screw it. Whatever you know, whatever happens, happens. Stay out of that comfort zone too. Yeah, yeah. Stay out of the comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. Because you just if you're getting anxious, your stomach's kind of bubbling up a little bit. It's probably a good sign that you should go and do it. And <laughs> yeah. if you fail, you fail. It's fine. Yeah. Just, you just try again or try harder. You learn from it and continue to go continue to go and i was going i wanted to ask you about um 
So you're you were thinking about going to a podcast, eh? So oh, yeah. is that is that um what in what like direction like how would you want to like structure it it's sort of like this really yeah but uh you know th- maybe there'll be a time for that uh down the road but uh you know just uh, having good conversations yeah um about the stories of the north you know with talking with leaders uh with you know people you know blow, joe blow on the street mm. you know everybody has a unique story yeah right? everybody <laughs> on this entire planet is not boring at yeah. all. You sit with them for, you know, a good full day and you'll, you know, get you'll hear some pretty amazing stories, sometimes horrifying, sometimes sometimes, you know, uh, miraculous stories. Yeah. Sometimes it's bullshit. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes it's it's not, right? Yeah. Sometimes it's serious and whatnot and I'm just kind of like um just feel it out, you know. Yeah. You can talk about anything and, you know, uh, yeah. And if you're lucky enough, there might be somebody to relate to it and yeah. you help them through it yeah. too as well. Yeah. And um, so with oh yeah, with going back again into um, going to the media space. Yeah. Um, was there any kind of like? Um, I know you. You're, there's like no like preparation for it because you didn't really know it. But then yeah. um, once you got into it, what was it like? Like, where you did you find that like? Maybe like you, there was like constraints or like oh, there's the the things. CBC? Oh yeah, like yeah, things yeah. you can't do and stuff. Yeah. Well, they're uh, the number one thing for them is uh, credibility, accountability, yeah. oh, of course. transparency, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, you know when you're sharing any any story, it needs to be factual. Y- it needs to be factual. You need to double, triple check your sources, mm. um, and, and because you know people are dependent on what they share on there right on, on that platform i think everybody like here you know, i know everybody like, goes to cbc for the news oh yeah 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 and that's the reputation they have and yeah. they don't want to be that you know that to be tarnished so mm. so you kind of like you grow up a little bit once you you get into a space like that right mm. because then you're like oh wow i made you know i made it i i and so we were, it was an event I was preparing for. I didn't have a suit or anything like that. I went to Edmonton, <clears throat> bought this nice blazer. Mm. And this woman, you know, that was helping me, she was like, oh, this is very nice. What, what do you got going on? And I was like, oh, I'm going for this award. And she was like, oh, where, where do you work? And I was like, oh, at the CBC. And she was like, oh, my gosh, no way. You must be so proud of yourself. I never thought of it like that up until that point uh, i was like holy smokes okay so maybe um, i i don't know whether you at that point you make it or not yeah. but i kind of felt like oh wow you know i've with the help with so much people to be able to to help me on this journey i've managed to arrive here because you can't do you and think you can do it alone no you no, can't no you can't and yeah. so now then you get there and then you're like now what what, yeah. what can I do with this thing? Did and you I, think you didn't? It didn't hit you that how um far you've gotten is it because like you're always on the next thing, the next thing. The yeah, next thing. yeah. You just get so busy, right? Yeah. You get busy with your family. You get busy with events, and at that time, um, I don't know more had kicked off, and we I helped with that. You know the organization of that, and I did a bunch of uh really cool things, um, uh, you know, uh, because I always believed that you have to try your best to help your 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 people your nation right yeah and the people that reside in your nation you know because we're all family and so um you know when i don't know more came around and things just started happening you know i and i've always wanted to get into music so mm. uh, you know i got invited by lila gildy like you know juno award winning or nominated at oh, that time yeah. you know Juno's singer. like that. and you're like holy smokes <laughs> wow okay so you you get so busy um and, and then yeah, when she said that, I was like, holy smokes, you know, yeah. you've been hard at it, you know, for, for the last 10 plus years. And now you have some time to reflect and you're like, damn, you know, yeah. um, this is great. You know, and I hope uh, a lot of other young, you know, indigenous people from our communities can can go through something like that. Yeah, because yeah, it's it's really um, it's a great feeling, you know, yeah. knowing that you, you've done a lot of great work, hard work. Um, you know, you've had some missteps along the way and whatnot, like mm-hmm. everybody else, um, and and what have you. And then to arrive to a place where you're like, okay, 
<clears throat> here's where I'm at though is like where where, where to next you yeah. know what I mean it's I don't know whether it's a human thing to always want to venture out and see what else is over the horizon yeah. but I'm that person yeah right yeah, 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 yeah. I, and, I'm like that too and I and I really become kind of selfish in a way <laughs> yeah. where I'm like you know you can rest here you can wait here yeah. you can turn back I want to see what's over there yeah you know yeah. and then be, because you're so like that you, you you know you can make mistakes mistakes and you can forget about things yeah. that were impo- are important and then you look back and you're like holy smokes i better slow down yeah i yeah. heard that too when you're when you're like that when you're always like on to the next thing and you're always wondering what's over that mountain over there and you you sometimes you you become like unhappy with where you are yeah because you always want more and more yeah. and more yeah 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 and so like now i'm at a place where i'm just like I'm okay with everything. Yeah. You know, I don't want anymore. I don't need anymore. You know, um, I'm still young, yeah. thankfully. I still have energy. I have ideas. I have visions that I want to carry out. Yeah. And, you know, right now I'm I'm at a place where I'm just kind of chilling out, you know, just mm. relaxing, not, not going, uh, not running again, you yeah. know. Maybe that's for later, the last hurrah of my youth. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's kind of where I'm at, and I, I, I enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. You asked me, where do you think this is going, the sub-podcast? Where do you think you're going? Um, that's a very hard thing to, to try to map out. Um, yeah. You know, I can't, I can't, I don't know the future. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm open, to, I, I'm open to whatever is out there. Yeah, a book. You know, people have asked me about that. Some people, you know, want to see me in leadership role. Yeah. Like, I got asked last year to uh, sit as the interim grand chief of the Detroit First Nations, right? Mm. But then I turned that down because it, 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 they required an answer right away. Oh, okay. And I was like, do I stop my career? Right. Uh, and do I jump into a different seat? Yeah. Or do I just, you know, pause it for now yeah. and look at it again down the road? So I paused it. And then, um, I thought, you know, something better is co- like I always have these fe- feelings. You know what I mean? Like something, something's coming. Something, something great is coming. Yeah. And so at that moment when I said no, that's what I said. And me and my buddy, my, my colleague Graham was there. And then I was like, yeah, maybe something else better will come along the way. And then not too long after that, I get this call. You want to go to Rome? Mm. Do you want to go be, uh, you know, a a cultural performer for the delegates over there to, you know, uh, lift up their spirits during the the hard times that they're going to be having, having these conversations with uh, Pope Francis? Performing in what kind of performance? In in Rome, like the Dene prayer song. There's a a group of us that I was... uh, drums and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, chant and, and, and storytelling. And so I got asked to be a part of that. And I tell you, that was an incredible, p- profound moment. Um, and, and there's videos of me dancing behind the drummers yeah. um, or in front of them behind the delegates. Like that was one of those moments where you're just so proud to know that there was people that fought very hard to keep on, you know, to keep protection of our songs our ceremony yeah. our belief system and all of these things that make us dene yeah you know that make us the the people of this land uh, i was in that moment i was like i'm so thankful for for the you know these things that they tried so hard to rip out of us yeah that it's still here right yeah and that we still have this beautiful land you know and the 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 uh, sufficient amount of water and resources to sustain our nations and so um you know there was a lot going on at that time but anyways so that's one example uh, another one there's a territorial election coming up some people want me to run for MLA and yeah. you know and, and what have you and, and so there's all the, the Did you ever gave that some thought um to be honest that's kind of where i wanted to be when i was younger yeah um, so my, my grandfather, George Neali was a chief. And because of this, my grandfather had intimate, my grandmother, who was, um, her, uh, that, that was her husband. Hmm. She had intimate knowledge of how, you know, he conducted, uh, his work as a leader, you know, because what he knew was passed down from his parents and yeah. their parents. And they didn't go to these residential schools. Oh. 
so everything that he they had learned in the manner of you know what it takes as a community, not so much as a leader, yeah, right. Really, they're motivators, right? Mm. They they motivate the community members to wanting to achieve something. I feel know? like that that would be like my my thing. I yeah. don't I don't want to be a leader. Uh-huh. If you mm. fuck up, you by because of something <clears throat> I told you to do, yeah. you're the damn fault. Yeah, because like I feel like a leader, you have to like. It, you're on every day, all day, like you, yeah. your image and everything. Yeah. I, that's not me. That's but, not me. I'm, I'm more of like, I'm like the, the guys that's standing beside a leader who's a leader's like, yeah. mm, we well, got a problem over there. Go, <laughs> go fix it. Well, and that, then I go there and fucking tear shit out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but here's the thing is it's a colonial structure, right? Oh, yeah. It's, it's a colonial structure. Like we as a people had our own clan systems and the elder, and their eldest, you know, offspring were the spokesperson for that clan. And then every each clan had that leader, right? Yeah. And there was never just one, you know, one like like a king or yeah, a queen. Yeah. Um, um, but, uh, you know, th- there, there had to be a, a group yeah. that, that came to a consensus for an agreement or a disagreement or, or whatever. And everybody know. has their own set of skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody own. brings something to the table. Yeah. Nobody was ever left out. And that's what I meant about inclusion earlier in our yeah. conversation is that, that that's very important, right? And the elders knew this. And, and so anyways... Um, you know, my grandmother would, I would always ask questions, right? I was yeah. always curious and I would always question things too. And that's how you gain knowledge. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. how you learn how to think, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and use your imagination. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I kind of was like, okay, I can do that when I get older. And, mm. you know, I have kind of demonstrated very early on that I wasn't afraid of crowds, you know, and, or of our people because my grandpa was always like why well, don't be scared of your people these are your people yeah. Th- this is our family these are our friends you know that you shouldn't be scared of them yeah. you know and, and um so i grew up in you know a, a, a kind of like that yeah um so um very early on i thought yeah okay i'll become a leader and mm. i got these ideas and these plans and then life just had other plans for me right uh, yeah, well. and i sat down with good storytellers that's why i'm able to to sh- share good stories i guess some people say um but me i'm just really just sharing you know through my own experiences and yeah. what i've heard from others um and, and you know it's paid off yeah. you know but uh you know would i consider leadership perhaps you know yeah. if i feel like there's a time where we need a, a fresh new batch of leaders but uh like like i said before it's a, like a colonial thing and, and it's kind of like you get in there and and then you you kind of you know the, like the um, you become colonial right you, you become your people's oppressor <laughs> uh, in, what, in what way <clears throat> do you just like the buck stops here you know like um when it like, don't do this don't do that go you know? this way instead. yeah like yeah. guiding them and stuff yeah but, but people need that they society needs that. yeah they need that yeah that's mm. a, yeah but that's just like an off-cuff idea you know yeah. but you know um i know like a lot of people would just like to be free to do whatever the fuck they want and yeah. then they do that and then they don't have anything their life's all messed up yeah. and then because they're just chasing pleasure instead yeah. of doing what they were supposed to do with their their responsibilities yeah. and it's that see that's not that's not how to do it it's obviously yeah. not working oh you know? no well you you, you have see, to have discipline like, and rules structure oh yeah yeah you have mm. to have that in order for you know civilization to continue on yeah. on the path that it's going on today um but um you know deep down i know that you know there are leaders out there that do their best and try their best uh, but not everybody is on board you know yeah. and you know um how can I describe it? I think it was Joan Jack. She's a lawyer. She she described it. It might be her or somebody else, First Nations lawyer or uh, or a scholar or somebody. Um, they describe leaders and leadership and communities like a giant canoe. Mm. Th- this is the best analogy I can think of is that you want everybody to see this vision that you have, this goal that you're trying to get to. And you're in the front yeah guiding your people helping your people to get to that vision to get to that goal 
and everybody behind you is, has a paddle. Everybody has a role to play. Yeah. But as soon as, you know, the uh, information um, or decisions or, or what have you uh, get scrambled, you know, people get, you know, um, don't don't see that vision with the collective. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. They're, they're stopping and then they're asking questions, yeah. which is reasonable. But, That's normal, yeah. But, you know, once you have one disruptor disrupting everybody else. Yeah. Soon everybody stop. They stop paddling. Yeah, and, yeah. And and now you're going backwards. Yeah, going in circles too. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that was the whole purpose of the the clan system. Mm. Is so each clan was informed by yeah. their clan leader, right? Yeah. They would bring whatever information was shared at this gathering, yeah. and then they would figure it out amongst their clan whether they were for it or, or against it. Yeah, and, and that's what's they, important. They, they would form a consensus, right? Yeah, to yeah. be vocal about yeah, what yeah, you mm -hmm, think too mm -hmm. with your leaders. Like, let them go to those um, meetings, those council yeah. meetings, because those are for the public. Yeah. Go there, express yourself, let them know how you're feeling. Because, like, those thoughts of, oh, we're not going in the right direction, Those that's normal, but then you have to express it. You can just... Don't go and complain about it. You know, uh, so or that, complain about it online. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see a lot of that shit. Yeah, yeah. And it's fine too. But then, I, online too. Like, I, what I don't people take that as like facts oh, yeah, from people's yeah. posts on Facebook. Yeah. It's like no, do no. maybe you might like see it and you might agree with it, but then do your own research. Yeah, every yeah. time. Make do sure. the face to face. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, that's the best. That's the best thing. Um, so yeah, uh, leaders, leadership, maybe down the road. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, I, you know, I can't even tell you if, 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 we, if we'll wake up tomorrow, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Aren't you yeah, a little young for that though? Just, yeah, yeah, for kind of, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that's one aspiration I've always wanted to. Oh, be to, the youngest one? To, to check it Just out. Oh, yeah. uh, no, not to be the youngest leader or anything oh, yeah. like that. Like I have no ambition to be the best or mm. I just want to be able to um, do things that will benefit, you know, everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I come from a household where that was the belief is mm. whatever big game you have, yeah. you shared it, right? Yeah. Uh, you were kind, you were respectful and, and what have you. Yeah. Um, and don't keep it to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Don't keep it to yourself. Like I. You have um, the formula. You have yeah. the formula. Share it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I grew up very different from a lot of my peers. Mm. Uh, I grew up very, uh, in a very different household. Um, you know, there, for us, for me, I can all because there was only ever me. Uh, you know, with my grandparents, but my like grandparents, an only child, kind of a thing. Yeah, my my grandparents mothered me with love, support, and, and were just there a hundred and ten percent all of the way. Right. I know. There's, you, uh, you know, even when I got into trouble, you yeah. know, they they try to hide me. You know, <laughs> my wife, me too. You know what I mean? I like, feel like that's an indigenous yeah, parent yeah, thing. Yeah. No, 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 my oh, kids didn't do it. Coming, go, go in the back. Yeah. Go, yeah. Go in the bush. Yeah. And then they go and ask questions. The cop comes yeah. and they're like, "No, he was here the whole time." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I grew up uh, in a very loving home. Um, but outside of that, I also got to experience, you know, uh, quite tragically, all of the things that, you know, our parents had gone through when mm. it comes to residential schools that, you know, that stuff that came back to our community is right. Um, because uh, and, and it was very difficult, you know, uh, for a lot of our people out there watching this. It's very, you go into any community, any indigenous community, and you'll see the dysfunction that's there that was created by the system yeah. that tried to eradicate us. Yeah. Right? That, that cultural genocide, uh, for, you know, for the, through the form of residential school and yeah. the racist government policy that, you know, was just in place not too long ago. Yeah. Right. And so. I don't, um, wait, 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 wait. I don't like this too. Like people like say who are not indigenous, they say things like, oh, like, why do they always talk about it? Why do they always bring it up? Why is this always a thing? It's because it's important that we all remember it and like recognize it and um, put like shine light onto it so it doesn't happen again. Yeah. And um, if you want to look at it that way then you can we can flip this we can flip this around and be like oh what about you like what well, remembrance day clover day whatever that is like yeah. you guys remember all the people who died for you at the war let us remember ours too and give them um the time and the attention and the light that they deserve oh yeah yeah definitely yeah. it's important and uh you know so i grew up in like outside of the home kind of exposed to a lot of that but then mm. um you know i like to focus on you know there, there's a lot of 
bullshit that happens growing up indigenous you yeah. know there, there's a lot of and it's still happening to this day but uh you know I, I like to focus on also the good things you know that that still hung on you know through through this you can go oh through this tumultuous time right yeah and that was, you know, our belief system, the the way, um, the the stories that were shared by, you know, my grandmother were just incredible. Yeah. You know, like pre-colonial, uh, you know, uh, how things were, how we conducted ourselves, how there was so much respect and love for one another and all of that. Um, and so for for myself, I, I, I like tried to gravitate towards that. You know, but when you're young, growing up, and, and you're trying to find yourself, and you get mixed up with in some of the, you know, misguided uh, groups, you you make mistakes, and that's exactly what happened with me, right? Like yeah. I, I um, did some B and E's and theft and, and all of that, and a lot of that was a result of uh, just not having enough money, right? Yeah. My grandmother wanted cigarettes. We were out of food, and you know these uh, survival mode. These boneheads had this idea to go into our local community store. And, yeah. You know, looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, that store was there for us. <laughs> we just like, took advantage of it. Yeah. And, you know, um, uh, of the situation, and then you know, I got into trouble, and then. I ended up in foster care and then ended up in young offenders and yeah. in and out kind of like the the path I was taking was like really becoming a career criminal right mm. and um I remember this uh tourist that came through the community and they were there and uh, it was a I think it was a Japanese tourist he had all of this nice gear and so I went down there and I took the the clothes out and and then, uh, you know, he was looking for it, and um, my my good friend Gary came to my house, mm. and just he like this guy knows me, and was like, you know, Lawrence, fucking, we know you, I know you took his stuff. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> trying to try play dumb. Yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? I don't yeah. got nothing. Yeah. He's like, no, I know you. Why man. are you lying? Uh, yeah. Why are you lying? And why are you stealing? Yeah. Your grandparents raised you to be better than this. Yeah, that's always a line. What? 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 What are you doing? Yeah. You, you just got out. You're getting into trouble again. You know, we enjoy your company around the community. Just stop what you're doing. Yeah. And so I said, okay. So I stopped what I was doing and that kind of like put me on a different path. Oh, right? that's good. You listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's sometimes you don't want to listen, right? Yeah. So when you're you're young and naive. And you think you know everything. Yeah. And I was like, I can either not listen and continue on this path, but he's right. You yeah. know, my grandparents, they wanted the best for me and I wanted the best for myself because I know if I, um, you know, took, good care of myself, respected myself, loved myself and what have you, I can then turn that around and do the same for others, right? Yeah. I can help them out, hopefully. And so, um, oh, yeah, are. well, there's a lot more that factored into turning a, a different leaf, but, uh, you know, that's kind of like where, where I come from. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's an amazing story. Well, no, well, it's so, sort of what. Like, it's because okay, so, I think like a lot of because a lot of people relate to that, right? Like yeah. you, you um saw like where you were going wasn't a right place. It's yeah. not where you wanted to go, and that's not who you were. Well, and then you changed it to go into yeah. a positive direction. Yeah, and you know, I was hanging around with people that like to drink, like to party, and you yeah. feel like you're missing out. So you jump in, you get involved in the mix, and then... Yeah, that's you, like chasing the pleasure thing know, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get caught up in blacking out, making mistakes. Yeah. And, you know, I would wake up, and then, you know, friends would be like, man, you're crazy. Why'd you do that? And I'd be like, well, do what? Yeah. They're like, you almost beat up, or whatever, and you're like, holy smokes. Yeah, I don't even remember don't even remember that that's scary right yeah and it's become so normalized in our community and you can die too and you can die right i had a lot you too probably had lots of people lots of friends you know that have died because of their addictions yeah and there was no help and you know that's just a result of all of the other negative effects of you know colonialism and residential school trauma and intergenerational trauma right and um <clears throat> So um, I get caught up in this, 
And then, um, you know, I, I ended up hurting some friends mm. and one, it was, um, I don't know what happened. You know, all, all I remember is waking up and then they said, you almost killed buddy. And I, I guess in a fit of rage, yeah. I, I don't know how it was brought on. I, I took a, a rod and I whacked over my, you know, my buddy's head. I grew mm. up with this guy. Yeah. You know, I would, I would never, you know, think about hurting my friends. Yeah. And he ended up getting this big stitch and cut and I got charged and I thought about that. And then, you know, we went down to, uh, the neighboring community down, down the river and I partied there, you know, and, and I got charged and I was still continuing on. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I was partying and I woke up near the Mackenzie river. I was mm. like just a few couple of rolls. Like, you know, to go into the Mackenzie, oh. if, you know, I would have drowned. And so strong there th- too. those two events and then going to court really opened up my eyes. I was like, you know, damn, I, I better, I better slow down here before I get into further trouble or hurt somebody or hurt myself. Right. Yeah. So I'm in this, uh, this court and this guy, his name is, uh, Mr. Brown, his Ken Brown, you know, he passed away, but, um, you know, at the time he was the justice of the peace judge, and I, you know, they read out the charges, and uh, and then the, you know they get to a point. Do you have anything to say on you know for yourself, Mr. Yeah. Neali? And I told him, this is not me. You know, I grew up in a very loving, caring home that was culturally enriched, full of language, laughter. Um, you know, I just made some poor decisions and I'm staying away from the alcohol and I'm going to get my life back into order. I'm going to take care of my grandparents while they're still here. And, you know, I'm going to find work and, and that's what's going to happen. This guy heard what I said and said, I want to call for a break, a recess. And then everybody is like taking the little breaks, but he, he is by the exit door and he waves me over. He's like, Lawrence, come. So, okay, step outside. And he hands me a cigarette. I was like, yeah, I'm out of cigarette, you know, having smoke. And it was like, uh, it was the evening. So that sun was just nice. And, you know, um, he looks, he's having a cigarette and he looks to me. He's like, hey, I was like, yeah. He was like, um, I want you to do something for me. I was like, okay. He was like, I'm going to drop all of these charges. Oh. And, uh, my, my whole My whole heart just sank right there. I was like, yeah. It's like, I'm going to drop all these charges. But I want you to promise me something. And I was like, okay. So I want you to promise me that you're going to do something with your life and you're going to stop hanging around with all these boneheads. Mm. And you're, you're going to do, you know, what you said you're going to do. Take care of your grandparents and just turn your life around. You know, here's the chance. I, I'm going to drop these charges Here's your chance. So uh, just make me that promise. And do you do you find <clears throat> that? I know earlier in the interview you said that when you go walk in the room, the energy, the energy, atmosphere changes and stuff. And do you feel like, um, like during your whole life, like people like always gave you chances, or yeah. like they always like try to like guide you and tell you what to stop? And yeah. like, you, and do you <clears throat> think that that's because they saw something in you? Probably. I call them my angels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Without yeah. them, I wouldn't be able to be where I'm sitting today, right? Yeah. Um, if you find that too, listeners too, if you find that people are constantly on your ass, they're doing it for reasons because yeah. they see, maybe they see potential in you that you don't even see yourself at that moment. You know, you just have to take it and take it with stride and yeah. that, just take it like they're um, trying to help you because they see something in you. Yeah, and it's not because they don't like you or anything like yeah. that. Most times they just want to see you do good in life. Yeah. You know what? That's, that's the main thing, you know, with older yeah. adults. And I'm at that stage where I wanted to see the same thing among many of our people, right? And so, he, you know, he took that chance on me. And I, I said, yeah, I, I'm going to take it even further, Ken. Yeah. We'll see where this goes, but I make you this promise. I am going to do something with my life. Yeah. And then he was like, okay, went back in dropped the charges i went out i I kid you not i started crying right there Mm. i thought holy shit i was like this this fucking guy believes in me 
he wants to see me do well. That's a lot of pressure too. At the same time, I'm like, okay, I'm not ready for that quite yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then at the same time, I'm like, maybe he's right. You know, yeah, you're never then, ready for shit. No, no, just you're go, not. Just, just go with, like, yeah. um, figure it out as you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you know, I was fortunate enough right after that to start working with the First Nations, uh, and then started traveling, and then I started hanging around with the older people. I've always been comfortable around elders, and yeah. well, you know. <laughs> Not old people, like old, old but well, kind of, you just know, a older. good mix. Yeah. Um, but I've always just been comfortable around them just because, you know, they like to listen. They have some pretty good, you know, uh, stories and yeah. advice and, and what have you. And so, um, you know, after that, I started hanging around with older, older adults and, you know. I feel like they understand you too more. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, that kind of formulated this way of how to conduct myself right? Mm. to conduct myself with uh, dignity honor and respect yeah not only for myself but those around me right yeah. and uh that's you know you grow up in a community where there was a countless amount of people and elders that would come in for your spiritual gatherings mm. sharing just what it is to be dene, dene keli, you know to be a human being you know that this is how you're supposed to be and um you know not until later on you you look back and you're like damn they mm. were they were right on about yeah. everything right and so um yeah that's kind of like where i, I guess uh you know led me to to where i am today but yeah just take advice take advice from people advice. even if you don't even if you don't think it's like the right one but just tell and like and take it in and t just take can take it into consideration you might need it down the road too eh oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. there's things that pop up years later and you're like oh yeah, yeah this is what he meant or this is what she meant or they meant and what have you um but, but you know when you have the language too you you have a little bit more access to knowledge mm. i find um, i am you know and, and because you can t communicate with the elders and they'll be able to share with you and because there's some things they can't oh translate into english eh? no and there's just like some incredible stuff dude man mm. there's like countless amounts of knowledge on how to you know that that term they throw around out there decolonize yourself mm. right how to decolonize them, the mind and the spirit. Yeah. Um, how to, you know, um, revitalize certain things, aspects of who we are. Yeah. Um, there's so much. You know, when um, the Hay River fire happened earlier this year, or the, and uh, the Dene Cultural Institute was threatened and they pulled a bunch of tape and materials out. And uh, we, I was chatting with an uh, elder from the community, Pat Martell, very knowledgeable. Uh, I advise people to go, you know, search out these people in your community. They, yeah. they, they're just like an encyclo encyclopedia. Yeah. Um, you know, they're the best professors. You know, they you, lived stick, it. you stick out in the, uh, out, you know, stick them out in the bush. That, mm -hmm. that combination, oh my gosh, man. <laughs> that is like university. You, you're you going to get your doctorate. You hang around with these people for five yeah. plus years. And it's free too. And they they free. will love yeah. it. They yeah. love it. And they love the company and they're just waiting there for, you know, to share this knowledge that they have, yeah. right? So I'm sitting there with them and we're talking about this and that and, and then, you know, I talk about, you know, the, the what were some of the things in the Dedna Culture Institute, you know, that were valuable. And, he, you know, it says drum songs and whatnot. And he says, you know, there's things that, are, you know, we collected that we, regarding healing and how to search out, you know, help from the land and the animals. Like son. I was mm -hmm. like, what's son? He was like, son is a practice where you construct a, a small little teepee. And then you uh, put uh, Italy, like a uh, spruce boughs and you just sit in there and you're just meditating. Mm. You're just meditating and you're asking for help from the animals and the land. And, and I was like, oh my gosh, that is some deep, deep spiritual stuff yeah. um, that we did on, you know, on the normal, you I, know, to, you, to guide us, to, to figure out like, what do I do from here? I need help here. Yeah. yeah. Just listen to it. Your gut feeling, whatever, like if you feel something, some kind of energy, it's usually, that's a good sign too. I wanted to, since we're talking about the land too, people talk about like medicine on the land as well. And I didn't know what they mean because when I was growing up, I thought, oh, you go to the doctor, he gives you some pills and then that's it. But then if you really 
look into it, those pills, they come from off the land, like plants oh, yeah. and things like that. They just kind of like break it down and they put it in this little pill and then give it to us. Yeah. So the medicine comes from the land originally, right? So, but then I, I wish that there was like some kind of like, a list or some kind of book that would like tell us where oh, it is yeah. and what it is and what is it, what is it good for? Um, I, I understand there's some material resources out there that are available oh, that is there? each community has, to has tried it. to do. Yeah. Um, but like the real good stuff, uh, the real powerful stuff that I think that's something you have to earn by spending time with those people that know that knowledge. Oh yeah. Um, give you an example. You know, there's a combination of, I think three or four plants when chewed, um, you know, let, let's say I got a big cut right here, right? And it's split right open. Yeah. They could go in the bush, get these plants together, you know, and and then stick it on there. Leave it on there for a day. You peel it off next day like nothing happened. Holy shit. There's medicine. There's there's good stuff out there that, you know, these elders knew about, right? Mm. That, that my grandparents and many others knew about. Um, and, you know, the land is powerful. I tell you, like, this land is incredibly enriched with something, some entity, some yeah. presence. I don't know what it is, but it's powerful. Like, I've had moments out in the land where I'm just like, did I really just see that? Mm. Did, did that just really happen? You know what I mean? Um, and it's just incredible. I'll, I'll never forget, you know, I, I had spent some time, you know, abroad and, and traveling. I had this money that uh, my father had set up a, a trust fund that I had access to. I went all gung-ho partying and whatnot. Oh, oh so you were one of those um, rich babies. Yeah, no, not rich babies, <laughs> but, you know, I had a, like that trust fund. It wasn't a whole lot, right? Oh, okay. Um, but, um, you know, I ended up doing all of that. And, and then um, what ended up happening was... <clears throat> I had spent so much time away and learning the the Mula English way mm. that I had forgotten some of the, <clears throat> some of the things to say in the language. So I went back home, and my grandma, my 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 mom, I like she's my mom. Yeah, uh, she said, "Right, when you're speaking the language, it doesn't sound as strong." And so she said, "You know, stay with us for a little bit." And so I said, okay. And I stayed with them. And then uh, that it was a spring or summer. And um, <clears throat> my grandmother, the, so there's two events that happened that summer. I was struggling with the words. And she had advised me to go to the, this one location near our community. And she said, just lay down on the grass, look up into the sky, and just ask for your, your language. And so I, I did that. And I like dozed off, took a little nap, and then woke up and I just laid there. And then I swear, all of these like words in the language started coming to me like through a different voice. It was really wild. Do and you I, find that like once you, um, I guess, like your English got better? Did it, um, your native tongue get like a little? It's it's a delicate balance. Okay, right because like it, it got like a little like like kind of like your. Because you're, you're, you're starting to lose, like, your dialect or, yeah. like, your it, accent. It, it, it really depends on which one you feed the most. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you're always just, you know, English-oriented and learning the language and all of that, yeah. then, of course, that is going to be stronger than your native tongue or, yeah. you know, your understanding of your cultural identity or whatnot. But if you feed them both, yeah. uh, you know, a good amount uh, and strike that balance, you can be strong in both, right? Mm. Be strong like two people pretty much. Um, so, like, um, that's kind of where, you know, I drew a lot of inspiration from, from my grandparents yeah. on learning those ways. Yeah. Because after, the, you know, I had that experience, um, you know, I was having like a really kind of downtime, like in, when I was 19 and um, she seen that and was like, "You, uh, it's like you're carrying around this big heavy sack. You, you don't look like yourself. I don't know, whatever you're carrying, you need to, to get it off your back. Yeah. And so she said, there's a, there's this way of doing that, go into the bush, you know, make a hole and just scream into it, you mm. know, and talk. 
And then that's what I did, and, and then it kind of helped. It kind of like counseling, using the land. But so there's that was like always your go-to if you needed help. We never went to like um, psychiatrist or a oh, therapist. Yeah. yeah, I did. Yeah, I went to a therapist actually a few times when I was in Young Offenders. Okay, right, because I, you know there's a lot of people in our communities that went through, you know, um, violent, abusive, sexual abuse, and yeah. uh, mental abuse, all of those things, right, in our community. And so, you know, I, um, you know, went through a lot of that and I went through it alone, Mm. right? You you imagine you're living with two old, elderly people, you know, they, they only have, you know, enough energy and and what have you to I deal with like, certain things yeah with that too like mental health wasn't really a thing for no. them back then they just thought that it was just that's just how life is you just kind of tough it through yeah, and keep you going just, you just blaze through it and which uh, is I, I know like a lot of that gets like a lot of flack too because I know like a lot of like the older generation they like to say things like oh like the younger generation are so soft and they're so sensitive yeah. but it's just like um, I think it was it, it's like that because like we lived a more we we're living like a more like comfortable more safe life than they did so now our mind wanders now more because we're not in survival mode all the time yeah and so then so now we're like oh okay like now we're more aware of what our surroundings and what we're feeling and what we're going through and i think that it, that's a good thing that's because it's going to make us us stronger like yeah. as, as people and just understanding ourselves and not just that trauma of no you need to deal with that that yeah. all that stuff in your head it has to be dealt with yeah you you can hang on to those things and my grandfather was always under that mindset that you know of course you know bad things are going to happen you know things are going to happen in this life that, that's the way you learn right yeah. through, the, through these experiences but you can't let that hold you back. Yeah. And how you let that hold you back is if you're holding on to that stuff. Yeah. So you got to learn how to let go. And, you know, through therapy, you work that out. And mm-hmm. I've only been, to, you know, to that a few times. And most of the times, you know, I've counseled with my close friends and, you know, my, my spouse and whatnot. That's where I get my counsel from, right? Whenever I'm going through a difficult time. Because you, you realize you're not alone. You're not out in mm-hmm. this world doing things alone. You just got to learn how to reach out for help. And just say, hey, you know what? I've hit this wall. I need help. Like, yeah. I need serious help. And there's people out there that really care and love you and, you know, want to see you doing good. And they'll, they'll spend their energy and their time to helping yeah. you out, you know? There's- I know, like, everybody, like, we always think that we're, like, unique and we're completely different than everybody else, that our story is just only ours. It's like, no, once you tell it, you're going to be surprised how much people will relate to you. And they'll, like have some advice or maybe to have a friend who went through a similar thing and it's just about like being together mm-hmm. as one and being connected to your community around you yeah. and helping each other and just that's how we all grow in the end yeah yeah mm-hmm. and the, like the thing too is when you hit your 30s and you're looking back and you start to realize why so many of those you know like our parents and their parents were so like you know, like like rocks, mm. you know, no emotion and whatnot. It's because of, like, what happened to them. Yeah. Like, that, like that, that was just recently. Yeah. And for them to have, to be able to raise families... Yeah. Holy smokes. Fuck, they were you know, like, like babies that, too. Yeah, that takes They were babies that, having babies. That takes strength, right? Because yeah. the, you know, you know, sometimes I hear people saying, you know, we they never shared that story with us. Well, for me, it's like, why would they? they that's going to bring you down. And I, I don't think they want to do that. You know, yeah. they, they want to ensure that you're safe, that you're loved, that you're comfortable, that they that you don't ever have to deal with the, the, the type of shit that they had to yeah. go through because that's some hardcore stuff. Yeah. You know, and so... Um, be good to your parents. Be good to, you know, be good. Be respectful. Love your parents. Take time for them because they're not here forever, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, for me, I'm, I'm thankful I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. Mm. But then there was a part of me that also wanted to know who my mom was. Mm. I wanted to know who my dad was. Because you were in a foster system. Uh, well, it wasn't really foster. Like, uh, living with my grandparents, they were, they were like my mom and dad, yeah. right? But that, you know, growing up, that that's who I thought they were. Uh, but then I found out that I actually had a mother and I had a father and I had these siblings. So you grow up kind of like, well, where are they? Well, yeah. You know what I mean? And um, later on, you know, I met up with them. 
And you know what's crazy? It was the first time I met my mother. I was in Young Offenders. Mm. I was locked up, yeah. secure, secure custody for I think six months, nine months. And um, you know, she like came in, and I was like, out of all the times, so why now? Like, and she just came in to say, you know, um, I heard that you were in here. Your dad wouldn't have never wanted you to be in here. I don't know why you're getting into trouble, but you should listen to your mom and your your grandma and grandpa, and you know, don't stop getting into trouble. <clears throat> in my mind, I thought. <sighs> I kind of like was a little bit hurt, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like after what 14, 15 years, now you show up and now yeah. you want to give me a little bit of guidance. Yeah. Like where were you? Like uh, you know, why why did you just give me up so easily, right? Yeah. yeah. Um but then you know, you realize that it was my my grandmother that really wanted one of us. Yeah. And so I just accepted that, you know, yeah. at that time. And I I never get mad for too long, like, yeah. you know, and um, I, I realized, I was like, okay, so she did it out of out of love. Had she had seen me when I was growing up real young, she probably would have took me back and I probably would have missed out on the things that needed to be passed on to me through my grandparents. Yeah, like suggestions you and know, cultures and stuff. Yeah, yeah. so... Um, now that I'm older, I'm like, everything that had happened to me needed to happen mm. in order for me to, you know, see the, the, the vision that I have for myself, right? Yeah, and being present. And being present, yeah. Yeah, because if you're, you can't just think about the past, it's already happened. Yeah, yeah. And my grandpa was always, the, he was such a ch- chill guy. Yeah. You know, when shit hit the fan, he'd be like, just calm down. Don't panic. We're going to figure this out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or just let it be. You know, yeah. let it be, whatever. Yeah. You know, it's none of our business. Yeah. Um, once it becomes your business, then sure. Yeah. Focus your energy on, on solving, you know, that problem or what, or what have you. My grandmother was uh, different, you know, um, and she was a go-getter. Oh, yeah. She, she wanted things done and she wanted things done a, a certain way. And uh, you're to respect that. And, and so, um, you know, having him also, you know, very on the you know, religious side, believing in the Bible and what have you. That was an interesting d- dynamic. Yeah. My grandmother was the opposite, you know, held on to the, the ancient ceremonies of our mm. people, the different practices and whatnot in our household. And so I got to see both of those worlds in and mm. out, right? Yeah. And that was interesting. And I was always like, cool, man. I, I'm more curious about grandma's side. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> That's like a- I, I know Jesus' story. He died on the cross for us and, you know, praise him. Thank yeah. you, you know. But this stuff my grandma's talking about, that you know, the stuff her her friends are performing, yeah. you know, the, the ceremonies, uh, how to get bad medicine out of people or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, just like uh, absorbing everything around And the you. stories they shared about yeah. little people, <laughs> shapeshifters, you know, I was like, damn, that is some juicy stuff. What's that story about little people anyway? Because like, I remember uh, my cousin and uh, my friend of mine, yeah. we went um, on that hell, I don't know what you call it, just here on Old Town that, at the top. There when you walk up, anyway. There, there's oh, like pilot, uh, pilot's monument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's like um, I didn't notice before because I've been there a couple of times. There's like these little like houses, like these little shack or like a uh, warehouse or something, and the doors are tiny. The walls are like it's yeah. just small, and it's just like I just thought like what they were like people back then like short. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're really tiny people. Um, <laughs> like the the north, you know, that we call we call this place Den and Day, right? Land mm-hmm. of the human beings, land of the people. Um, you know, this is such a mysterious land. I know. Out there. You know I, I mean, we don't know what's out there. You you hear stories of these giant beings in the lake. Uh, or, you know, these giant animals that they used to kill, giant eagles and birds, and yeah. you know, dinosaurs and whatnot. And you're just like, wow, this is this is so incredible. Uh, the amount of stories that are up here. Like, did you know when the glaciers came over North America, when everything started to freeze, there was pockets that were isolated from all of that, right? That were habitable for, okay. for living things to sustain themselves. And we had a particular area like that out in the Nahanni National Park Reserve, right? So imagine everything covered by ice, but then you have this 
huge pocket that's just untouched. The greenery is prehistoric. <laughs> you have animals, maybe mammoths running, running in there, caribou. Mm. You know, everything is evolving slowly. And then you have our people. Kind yeah. of mingling in there, surviving, yeah. holding it out until everything melts, and then <laughs> everything melts, and then they spring out from there. We're survivors. And, and yeah. yeah, we're survivors, right? Yeah. And, you know, they, they say we came from, like, Africa and whatnot, but, you know, and they talk about this Bering Sea Strait. This, really? this, I thought that we, uh, um, we were always here. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's the belief, right? Yeah. And that's the thing with bridges. Right, they say we came over here, but bridges work both ways. Yeah, you know, what if it was us that went over there? Yeah, you know, what if Africans are original? You know, <laughs> we could be here all day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, <laughs> that's another episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another. Episode. And that's the thing too with that too. Like you can turn on like the Discovery Channel, the History Channel, and then you can know like what uh, Egypt did like thousands of years. Yeah. We need that for us. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you know the big thing, right? <laughs> But I mean, like, um, it's, it, you know, the world we're living in today is very interesting. Yeah. Um, and there's just, and I've said this before, is the North is so underexplored. We don't know what is out there. Yeah. You know, we, for all we know, we could have pyramids up here that the people built long time yeah. ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe it's tucked under a huge growth of trees that we have, you know, in abundance. Yeah. Maybe it's underneath one of these lakes. We don't know, right? Yeah. Like, we don't even know, too, if we were, like, the only we know that we're not like the only uh at first like advanced civilization you know what I mean? that's how like the pyramids were made and yeah. like all these things so it's just like it's kind of like interesting to think like oh since they made the pyramids there in egypt what about here like what about the yeah. civilizations here yeah. what did they create yeah you know, you know and, and now you know they had these u.s hearings on uaps uh, saying they're disclosing that you know there are ufos and there's <laughs> non-biologic like anything could be non-biologic just yeah. say it man you know we've been through a pandemic we, we, we've been through a lot of Not hardships. Nothing will fucking surprise me. And it's like, okay, what else? Like, the yeah. world's supposed to end next month or whatever. Yeah. It's like, whatever, just get over and done with. Like, yeah. A fucking you know, spaceship came shit. and started shooting at uh, downtown. Mm. I'm just going to be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you that, know, but that's when, happening, okay. <laughs> when, when this news came out, people were like, you know, I, I could care less. What I'm more curious about is whether they have affordable housing on their planet or not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is where people are at today, right? People yeah. are struggling. People are having a hard time. Too much homeless and, people. It's crazy. Oh my gosh. And yeah. there's so much fucking houses that are empty. Yeah, yeah. Like, what the hell? Like, go mm. put these people in houses. They need a uh, bed, comfortable, a place to, like, rest their heads yeah. and take care of their families. And that's the thing, too, with our people is we never stayed in one place for too long like mm. like how it is right now this is really like an experiment this isn't a european experiment that was brought over to kind of keep us in one place and control us to, yeah so we can become consumers and whatnot because when you're traveling everywhere and you're moving all the time yeah you don't have time to buy all of these things and they can't tax you and carry it around it's all about you know money I mean? it's always been about money yeah, people yeah. say things like oh uh they're all like racist and stuff that Thing maybe I don't know, but it's always about money. Like the I remember reading about this too somewhere that um the whole like slave trade when they brought all the Africans to North America yeah that was about money like oh, they because okay. they they were like selling the slaves and the slaves were building on um, property they're building all these buildings and stuff for the rich yeah so it was all um money based oh yeah you know yeah, what I mean yeah, yeah yeah that's crazy but I mean you know there's so many incredible stories up here there's lots of medicine lots of good the good Good people, you know, and uh, you know, I just like it up here. It's yeah. nice. Yeah, I know it's nice and peaceful. The the rest of the world is burning, and you mm. know, it's it's crazy what's happening to the planet right now with the yeah. whole water levels, all of this stuff happening. It's it's yeah. It's I terrible. love it. There's no mosquitoes outside right now too. Yeah, that yeah. fire fire went and killed all those little oh. fuckers. <laughs> I thought nothing could kill them. I thought nothing could kill them. <laughs> yeah. I remember stepping outside of my parents' house to have a smoke. I was like, holy shit, this is nice. <laughs> you can go have a picnic or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great, you know, and uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm in favor of that. You yeah. know, you go way into the bush, though. You go into the tundra. Holy smokes, those those mosquitoes are all uh, sucky dry. Uh, I saw so the, much out there. <laughs> they but, were saying on face. Uh, I, I saw somewhere on Facebook. They're like the mosquitoes now. They just lift up your pants and then they just go and bite you. <laughs> 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 but yeah, the land is incredible. You know. Um, this okay. connection we have, you know, as uh, spirit beings, you know, having 
in this human experience is beyond anything like yeah. there's some things out there that i'm always curious about like why did that happen or how did this happen um a good example is we were out in the bush years ago and my friend had gone to this altercation and he was about to leave the camp and we had to walk across this like rapids that had just formed with ice mm. and you know we have, good thing I brought my drum. Yeah. I brought my drum and we made a little fire, made a little offering and asked for help. And then when we were done, these little, this little uh, trail, this fox trail just appeared. And I was like, this guy knows where he's going. <laughs> we followed him all the way and he brought us across and we got to the other side and I was just like, how the heck did that happen? What was there? What was, oh, f- across. The, oh, Smith, Fort Smith. Oh, the, okay. the rapids of the dead, they call it. Oh, okay. The, the slave river rapids. Yeah. You know, those two guys that walked across it, that was me and that was my buddy there. Ah. But, um, you know, my grandfather always said, you know, whenever you're traveling on ice you don't know about, mm. uh, carry a long stick. And that's what they did. Ooh, right? I never you, heard that before. In case you fall in, it, it can grab onto you. Ah. Right? You can use that and, and, and what have you and get out of there. Um, so That's what happens when you have a curious mm-hmm. mind. You just go and do shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not thinking of other consequences. Yeah. So I, I did that. Went across, and then there was this uh, f- fresh uh, f- uh, new ice that had just formed. Yeah. The one on the left looked more safer than the one on the right. I was there in the fall, right, launching a boat, and I knew that f- that river is fast flowing and it's mm. deep in that launch that boat launch area. So I was like, if we fall through that, you know, that's it, we're screwed. Mm. And so. I was looking to the right. I was like, no, no, no. I went to the left and I took like probably about two, three steps. And all of a sudden I just heard, Loy, yeah. my, my dad, my grandfather, he had passed. But he was yelling at me like clear as day, like he was right behind me. Yeah. I looked behind. I was like, what? I was like, okay, the, this is obviously a warning. Yeah. I better listen to it. I grabbed this stick and... I went to, over there and I poked it about probably two and a half, three feet away from me. Uh, I was a like, holy smokes. I pulled it back. I was like, had I just taken those steps, had that warning never happened, I would have fell through. So I went back, went the original way I thought, right? I thought to myself, that's what happens when you second guess yourself. Yeah. And that's also what happens when you don't build, you know, you don't follow this because my heart was telling me go on the right, <laughs> but my brain was telling me go on the left, right? Yeah. So yeah, so I followed my heart and then got got to to safety. But uh, something spoke to you. You know what I mean? Like the, the spirits. I don't know. Like the ancestors, it, our ancestors. We're here. We're a product of them. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, everybody, all of our the generations before us. Yeah, yeah, they had to go through everything they went through, and they are guiding us, whether we like yeah. see it or not. Sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah, and then there was like, you know, other things that I had seen. I once seen a wolf, a brown wolf, come out of the bush, thought it was going to attack me, and turn itself into two chickens instead. Really? And were dancing around me. Do, 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 do. <laughs> you ever see chickens dance? No. All right. They so they stick out their feathers like this. Yeah. And they just kind of go like that. <laughs> and, then, do, 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 do. and then one was hissing at me, freaking me out, man. As this was going on, right, the trees were swaying. The little bit of rain came, and then this lightning was just striking this one mountain over and over again. And then I was like, okay, I was like, I'm not here for you guys. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. And then they just stopped, uh. looked at me, and then. Just went on their little merry way like nothing had happened. Okay, this Freaked is me like... the hell out. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. That... There's a lot of like stories, huh? Yeah. Later that week, I had a vision. You know, I, I, I seen Creator or maybe I was an angel. I don't know, but them, them mountains up there, you know, and then the Hanny. Yeah, it's powerful. Mm. They they call that the spirit realm. Oh wow! Because right? that's where they believe Yamoja, Yamoga, the great lawmaker, the great traveler. Yeah. Right? The medicine man. Yeah. The, the big giant that killed the giant beavers. That's where they believe he originated from. Mm. Right? And so we're in his, you know, in his area, in his backyard. Okay. So, you know, there's a there's a pond up there. They, they call it Gathimitwe. You know, and when we were up there, and you go there to make an offering, every Dene has tried in the past, at least once in their lifetime, to make it there just to make an offering. That is our Mecca. That is where we go to make our our uh, offering to Creator, 
I didn't know that through through his, you know, where, oh, uh, yeah. you know. So this is way out there. This is like long ways. My grandfather went in there, and he had seen an animal change in front of him too. And uh, you know, he asked the elders back in his hometown in Blackwater, like, "I seen this animal change in front of me. What does it mean?" And those elders said, "Whenever you see that happen, something big in the world is about to take place." Oh. And then right after that happened, World War II kicked off for, for him, that generation. Bah. When I seen that wolf change into the two chickens, the year after the pandemic struck. Ah, COVID. So, so you know what I mean? Yeah. Like these elders have the, this ancient wisdom, you okay. know, that, that I was fortunate enough to, to have been a recipient of that. Yeah. Right? So. That's incredible. Um, so, so, so out there, it's a powerful place. Yeah. And so you go to this pond to make that offering, right? Yeah. And, and what's crazy? This is this blew my mind, and yeah. that got me more curious. Is that when you get there, there's these pile of rabbit foot, like their bones, if not okay. the first still on there, but it's rabbit feet, right? And I asked, I was like, "What, what is it? What is going on here?" The guy said, "The guy," he said, "Every night." Throughout the summer, we don't know why, but every single night, an eagle or a hawk drops a fresh rabbit near this watering hole. What does that mean? And then we don't know what eats it. Ah, okay. But they make an offering. The the, the birds, the, uh, the the eagles, they they make this offering of rabbits to this oh, rabbit so it's kettle. Just like every the, the living around it. They know to, yeah. to pay offerings to this, right? <laughs> like, yeah. So, you know, the animals are telling you, like, okay. this is a special spot. This is where you should go to make your prayer as a people. Mm. This is what, you know, creator created for you to do that, right? Yeah, it's higher power. So, like, you know, for me, as soon as I learned about all of these things, my mind goes in the direction of how can this be utilized to empower another human being? Mm to give them back their cultural identity, to, to give them these stories, this yeah. knowledge, right? To find themselves. Because really, at the end of the day, for me anyways, we're all trying to find ourselves out yeah. here, right? Yeah, we're trying real. to find meaning to our lives. Why are we here? Why are we born, mm. right? And so your inner spirit, your your jeune, yeah. uh, your, uh, like your, your uh, inner child, okay. right? Yeah. It, like this is the, what I was taught. Yeah. It takes off on you, mm. you know, your little inner child, the, that that little the kid that wasn't scared of the world or anything like yeah. that, you know, he's out there and it's your responsibility as a person, you know, going on this journey to find them again. Mm. And so, uh, you know, that that's what they say. And my grandfather was always like, it's not the land that you're scared of. The land is a reflection of you. Okay. So if you're scared of the bush, you're really, in essence, scared of yourself. Oh. Right? Right? So go out there. That's yeah. why they always say, go set snares. Go in the bush by yourself. Do you what know? scares you. Because. That's how you get, like, brave. And yeah. And that's how you build courage. And their belief was that if you go out enough times, maybe Creator will spot you, feel sorry for you, and give you something to help mm, you for your, okay. your journey forward, right? Yeah. And so when I learned about this, also, what you're trying to do is you're trying to invite that little that little person, you know that that little that little Vernon, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know that little that little kid that was not afraid of the world at all yeah. before the world came to him and you know shook up his home. He ran off, right? Yeah. And so once you go out there and you find yourself again, right? You find that inner child. You'll have the ability to never be scared of things. <sighs> in this world yeah. again you'll there be you go. you'll be sure of yourself you'll know who i am you know i know my limits what i'm comfortable with i know the you know the vision and how to achieve it you, you'll have it kind of, i'm not figured out but you'll just be more confident you know yeah. you'll, you'll know yourself a little bit more and just uh yeah you know okay yeah, it's pretty yes. cool. on that Anyways, note. I on that seen, note, yeah, yeah, we could go on and on and on, but I know you're checking out your time. You're like, holy, because my family talks cam lots. No, 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 talks more than me. Because <laughs> <laughs> my phone might die, like the, oh, the okay. recording. So, yeah, so thank mm. you for coming. Thank you for sharing everything with us today. Yeah, yeah, you're. 
you're really out here doing this shit, okay? <laughs> this is you have to come back. Yeah, yeah, no, I'd be more than grateful to come back on your podcast, and I encourage more people to check it out and yeah. support you. And you know, I, I see you doing this, and I'm just like, damn, this is what we need more of, right? Because mm-hmm. once you start showing this to, especially young our young kids out in our communities, you can do this stuff too, you guys. Yeah. You know, everybody can do it. You just know? start. Yeah, even if you're start. not gonna. Do it great or perfect. It just start and you can figure it out as you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just start, you know, be, you know, um, brave and just take those chances. Yeah. But know when to ask for help. Yes, right? exactly. And, and um, don't take life too seriously. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we're all going on this journey and we're here to learn. Yeah. Right? We're here to learn and to pass on what we have learned to the generations behind us so they can, you know, in turn make something even better than we could. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Great. On that note, right. listen to his man, everything <laughs> you said, take it in. Yeah. Thank you. That's, and that concludes another episode of Vernon's podcast. All right. Musty Cho. Thanks, Vernon. Yeah.